A character in the Harry Potter series that touched all of our hearts was the kind and innocent Dobby the House Elf. He brought so much to the series with hilarious lines. You could have killed me! Dobby never meant to kill. Dobby only meant to maim or seriously injure. Helping our hero through his journey and is one of the most loyal and honest characters in the series. The films unfortunately did not do him justice, only having him appear in two of the movies. He had a much larger presence in the books, which I'm going to elaborate on in this video. I'm going to go through his entire character arc throughout the whole series. Dobby was born into enslavement to the Malfoy family, specifically Lucius, Narcissa, and their son Draco. Dobby is a creature called a house elf, who are loyal magical creatures bound to serve one family for life. Most families that have them are the oldest and the richest wizarding families. House elves magic is a bit different than wizards, and they're even able to do some things that wizards might not be able to do. An example of this is that they can apparate and disapparate in areas that are prohibited for wizards to do the same thing. They also don't need wands to channel and perform their magic the way wizards do. House elves physically punish themselves for what they consider failure or disobedience to their master. If their master presents them with clothes, that means that they are set free. For most house elves, this would be an awful thing to happen, as most of them like to serve. Dobby, on the other hand, was different. He's a very rare elf that did not enjoy having a master. This might be because he was especially mistreated by the Malfoys to the point that they would threaten Dobby's life on a daily basis and would tell Dobby to punish himself. Dobby is always having to punish himself for something, sir. They let Dobby get on with it. It, sir. Sometimes they remind me to do extra punishments. While he was serving the Malfoys, he overheard Lucius' plans to reopen the Chamber of Secrets, which is a secret hidden chamber in Hogwarts Castle. Last time it was opened, a student died. When Dobby heard this, he was immediately worried for Harry Potter, the boy who would stop the Dark Lord. Dobby was somewhat obsessed with Harry and was in awe of him. Harry Potter? Such an honor it is. Because of this, he was worried for Harry's safety when the chamber would be opened again. He came up with a plan to intercept Harry's mail over the summer. If Harry Potter thought his friends had forgotten him, Harry Potter might not want to go back to school, sir. He then went to the Dursleys' house that same summer and warned Harry about the plot that his master was planning, something he would have to punish himself severely for. He told Harry that he couldn't go back to school, but when Harry asked him why, Dobby wasn't able to tell him because he would disobey his masters even more than he already did. Harry said that he could not do this and that he had to go back to school. I don't belong here. I belong in your world, a Hogwarts. It's the only place I've got friends. Dobby, now desperate to stop Harry from going back to school, made the cake that Harry's aunt made fly in the air. Harry Potter must say he's not going back to school. I can't. Hogwarts is my home. And then Dobby must do it, sir. For Harry Potter's own good. He then made the dessert fall to the ground. Harry would not only get in serious trouble with his aunt and uncle, but also with the Ministry of Magic. Harry was blamed for Dobby's use of magic, because the Ministry can't tell who cast the spell, but can only tell the location in which the magic was used. And because Harry was the only magically gifted person on Privet Drive, the Ministry thought it was him. This of course breaks the law that underage wizards aren't allowed to use magic outside of school. Dobby was hoping that this would get Harry expelled so he wouldn't go back to school, but Harry only received a warning from the Ministry. Dobby came up with another plan to stop Harry from going to Hogwarts, which was to seal the barrier to platform 9 and 3 quarters so Harry couldn't get on the train. It blocked both Harry and Ron, but Dobby's plan once again failed because Harry and Ron still made it to school using Arthur Weasley's flying car. Dobby thought his plan had worked, but later he found out that Harry still made it and he was so shocked that he burned the Malfoy's dinner, which he was severely punished for. Dobby was so desperate to save Harry from the chamber that he bewitched the bludger in Harry's Quidditch game to make it only attack Harry, hoping the bludger would give him an injury that would send him back to Privet Drive, so he would be away from the chamber when it was opened. The bludger ended up breaking Harry's arm, and Gilderoy Lockhart tried to mend his broken bone, but instead he made all of Harry's bones in his arm disappear. The point is, uh, <laughs> very clearly, the bones are not broken. Broken? There's no bones left! Harry was sent to the hospital wing and had to stay there overnight while Madame Pomfrey grew his bones back. In the middle of the night, Dobby apparated in the hospital wing, something that wizards wouldn't be able to do because all witches and wizards were blocked from apparating and disapparating on school grounds. Dobby confessed to Harry that he was the one that blocked the entrance to platform 9 and 3 quarters and the one that bewitched the bludger. 
Harry was so angry that he threatened to strangle Dobby. You better clear off before my bones come back, Dobby, or I might strangle you. Dobby then begged Harry to leave and accidentally let slip that the Chamber of Secrets had been opened before, but he refused to tell Harry who did it. Dobby then disapparated when he heard people coming. Dobby's master, Lucius Malfoy, threatened a few witches and wizards into signing a document to get Dumbledore sacked. We'll find all 12 signatures on it. Eventually, Harry figured out that it was a fraction of Voldemort's soul inside a diary that we would later find out is one of his horcruxes that was opening the Chamber of Secrets, and Harry put an end to it. Dumbledore was reinstated as headmaster, and Lucius came to see for himself, and he brought along Dobby. This instantly made Harry realize who his masters were. Dobby prompted Harry to realize that Lucius was the one to plant Tom Riddle's diary on Ginny Weasley. I think you slipped the diary into Ginny Weasley's cauldron that day at Diagon Alley. Harry then came up with a plan. Harry took off one of his shoes, pulled off his slimy, filthy sock, and stuffed the diary into it. Mr. Malfoy, I've got something for you. And he forced the smelly sock into Lucius Malfoy's hand. What the? Mr. Malfoy ripped the sock off the diary and threw it aside, and he turned to go. Come, Dobby. I said, come, but Dobby didn't move. He was holding up Harry's disgusting, slimy sock and looking at it as though it was a priceless treasure. Master has presented Dobby with clothes. Dobby is me. Lucius was enraged and went after Harry, but Dobby stepped in front of him. You shall not harm Harry Potter! And sent Lucius flying backwards. Harry then made Dobby promise to never save his life again, and they said goodbye. Harry Potter is greater by far than Dobby knew. Farewell, Harry Potter. After Dobby was free, he started looking for work that paid, which was unheard of for house elves. Because of this, he wasn't able to find a new position. Another house elf that Dobby knew, that was named Winky, said that freedom was going to his head. A few years after Dobby was freed, he finally found a paying job when he was hired by Albus Dumbledore to work in the kitchens at Hogwarts with the other house elves. Dobby asked for one galleon a week and one day a month off. Dumbledore had originally offered 10 galleons a week and weekends off. But Dobby was frightened when he thought about the prospect of so much leisure and riches. Dobby likes his freedom, miss, but he isn't wanting too much, miss. He likes work better. Dobby's friend Winky was also hired by Dumbledore after she was let go by her master Barty Crouch, and her reaction to being freed was not the same as Dobby's. She was devastated and started drinking a lot of butterbeer, and Dobby would have to take care of her when she did this. Harry, Ron, and Hermione went down to the kitchens, and when Dobby saw Harry, he ran over and hugged him. Dobby was still wearing the sock that Harry had used to free him, along with a bunch of other odd clothes, including a tea cozy for a hat, a tie, a pair of kid shorts, and another sock that didn't match the one that Harry had given him. He tells the three that he's using his wages to get a jumper next, and Ron promises to give Dobby his yearly Christmas sweater that his mom makes for him every year. When the three left, Dobby tentatively asked Harry if he could visit him, and he beamed when Harry said yes. A few months later, Dobby visited Harry in his dorm on Christmas morning. He was sitting so close to him that they were nose to nose until Harry woke up and yelled at him. Harry gave Dobby a pair of socks for Christmas. They has made a mistake at the shop, Harry Potter. They is giving you two of the same. Ron then gave Dobby a pair of socks as well, and Dobby was thrilled that he could mix them up. Ron also gave him the jumper that he had promised Dobby months earlier. Dobby gave Harry socks as well. One was bright red with a broomstick pattern, and the other was green with a pattern of snitches, both of which Dobby made himself. He bought the wool to make it with the little money he made from working in the kitchens. Dobby then left to prepare Christmas dinner with the other house elves. That year, Harry was in the Triwizard Tournament, and for one of his tasks, he had to breathe underwater for a long period of time. The night before the task, Harry still hadn't figured out a way to do this. Dobby overheard a conversation between McGonagall and Moody. They were discussing ways to breathe underwater for a long period of time, and they mentioned gillyweed. Dobby broke into Snape's office, stole a ball of gillyweed, and went to the library to wake Harry up. He had fallen asleep the night before, still trying to find a way to breathe underwater. He had 10 minutes until the task, and Dobby handed him the ball of gillyweed and told him to eat it before he went underwater. Because of Dobby's help, Harry succeeded in the task. Winky continued to drink a lot of butterbeer and Dobby would sometimes bring her to the Room of Requirement, a room that gives the Seeker whatever they may need at that very moment. When he would take Winky in there, he would find antidotes to Butterbeer and a nice elf-sized bed that he would tuck her into while she slept it off. Dobby continued to work at Hogwarts into the following year. One year earlier, Hermione had started a campaign to raise awareness for house elf rights called SPEW. She had started making hats and socks that she had put out in the common room so that the elves would take them while cleaning. Dobby was the only one who took the clothes 
clothes, and he wore all eight hats that he found at once. The other elves refused to clean the Gryffindor common room because of the hidden socks and hats, which they found very insulting. That same year, Harry started a secret and eventually illegal club due to Umbridge's new rules, called Dumbledore's Army, where he taught everyone defense against the dark arts. They couldn't find a place to hold their meetings until so Harry asked Dobby, and he excitedly told Harry that he could do it in the Room of Requirement, the same place that he would take Winky when she drank too much. The room was perfect for what they needed, and they held all of their meetings there. When Harry arrived for the last meeting before Christmas break, he found the room decorated, with things hanging down from the ceiling, all bearing Harry's face. That read, have a very Harry Christmas. Harry took all the decorations down before the meeting, ensuring that no one else would see them. Later that year, Dobby ran to the Room of Requirement, where Dumbledore's army was holding a meeting at the time, and he warned Harry that Umbridge was on her way. Harry ordered Dobby to go back to the kitchens and ordered him to lie to Umbridge if she asked if she told Harry. Because of Dobby's warning, many people got away, but Harry was still caught. When Sirius died, he left everything to Harry, including the Black Family House Elf Creature, who Harry had ordered to work in the Hogwarts kitchen, along with Dobby, Winky, and the other house elves. Harry called Creature one night when he was in the hospital wing, and when he arrived, he and Dobby were fighting on the ground. Creature will not insult Harry Potter in front of Dobby. Dobby will shut Creature's mouth for him. Ron and Harry broke up the fight, and Harry ordered both of them not to fight one another. Harry then ordered both of them to tail Draco Malfoy to find out what he was doing, because Harry was suspicious that he was behind several attacks that had happened that year. The two did as they were told, and when they gave the report to Harry on what Malfoy was doing, Hermione was outraged at Harry for making them work so hard. Dobby hasn't slept in a week, Harry Potter. They told Harry that Malfoy was going to the Room of Requirement, and he had people keep watch for him. Harry told Dobby that he had done brilliantly, and told him to go get some sleep. Harry, Ron, and Hermione did not return to Hogwarts the following year, as they were on a mission trying to find and destroy Voldemort's Horcruxes. The three were captured and brought to Malfoy Manor. Bellatrix was torturing Hermione, while Harry, Ron, and a few others, including Luna Lovegood, Ollivander, Dean Thomas, and Griphook, were locked in a cell. They had made the cell so that no witcher wizard could apparate or disapparate in and out of it. Harry was desperate for help as he heard Hermione's screams. He looked inside a piece of a two-way mirror that he had received from his godfather, Sirius Black, before his death. Help us. Aberforth, who was on the receiving end of the two-way mirror, sent Dobby to the manor. Because Dobby was an elf, he was able to apparate and disapparate in and out of the cell. Harry ordered Dobby to take the others to Bill Weasley's house in Shell Cottage, and then to come back to Malfoy Manor. Harry and Ron went upstairs and began to duel with the Malfoys along with Bellatrix, Greyback, and some Snatchers, until Bellatrix held a knife to Hermione's throat. Dobby wants. Harry and Ron dropped their wands, seeing no way out of the situation, until they heard a grinding noise from above. Dobby let the chandelier drop, forcing Bellatrix to release Hermione. Bellatrix, whose wand had been lost in the fight, ordered her sister Narcissa to kill Dobby. Before Narcissa could do anything, however, Dobby disarmed her. How dare you take a witch's wand? How dare you defy your masters? Dobby has no master. Dobby is a free elf, and Dobby has come to save Harry Potter and his friends. All of the heroes disapparated out of the manor, and Bellatrix threw a knife where they disappeared. Harry felt Dobby's hand jerk as they were spinning in nothingness on their way to Shell Cottage. When they finally arrived, Harry asked Dobby if it was the right place. Dobby? Dobby! The elf swayed slightly, stars reflected in his wide, shining eyes. Together, he and Harry looked down at the silver hilt of the knife, protruding from the elf's heaving chest. Hold on, okay? Dovey, no, don't die, don't die! The elf's eyes found him, and his lips trembled with the effort to form words. Dovey is happy to be with his friend, Harry Potter. And then with a little shudder, the elf became quite still. Harry decided to honor his friend by burying him the muggle way, rather than doing it with magic. They dug his grave in the cottage garden. Harry placed the elf's tiny body and arranged him as though he could be resting. Luna then spoke, It's so unfair that you had to die, when you were so good and brave. Harry, trying not to break down, said, Goodbye, Dobby. Harry's actions spoke louder than his words. Harry stayed to carve something on Dobby's grave. When Harry stood up, the stone read, Here lies Dobby, a free elf.